Divorce me. I've recovered from my illness, and I'm starting a new life. My husband, who has recovered from the illness, thanks to my organ donation, said. He begged desperately, before the transplant surgery, but after the surgery, he did not thank me, but treated me badly, and even demanded a divorce. He insulted me with harsh words while looking at me as if, he was making fun of me for being confused by his sudden declaration of divorce. I don't need an old and sick wife, to start over in life. My name is Noel. I'm currently 31 years old, and I'm a housewife but I also work at a company. When I was 28 years old, I married my husband Bennett, who is 3 years older than me, and I gave birth to our daughter, Gemma, shortly after. After maternity leave, I returned to work and, while juggling housework and taking care of our daughter, we were living happily together as a family of three. However, Bennett started feeling sick often, and when he went to the hospital to see a doctor, to our surprise, we learned that he had end-stage renal failure. He had delayed going to the hospital, due to his busy work schedule, which resulted in a delayed diagnosis. Consequently, he couldn't work anymore and had to quit his job. Until a kidney donor could be found, he needed hemodialysis three times a week. It was a sudden turn of events, and I was overwhelmed with anxiety. However, since Bennett could no longer work, I knew I had to work even harder. Our daughter was only three years old and in her prime growing years, and I couldn't rely solely on Bennett's severance pay and disability pension. Taking care of our young daughter, while concerning about Bennett's health, added to my already substantial burden. It was then that my mother-in-law, who had been worried about us, suggested that we live together. She has been living alone in her family home, after her husband had passed away, and our relationship was good. Bennett would also find comfort, in having his own mother nearby. Thinking this would be beneficial for all of us, I gratefully accepted the proposal and, we moved to my mother-in-law's house, to start living with her. My mother-in-law not only cared for her own son, Bennett, but also always looked out for my daughter. When I was at work, she helped with household chores, picked up our daughter from daycare, and she did all kinds of things for me. Bennett technically became a stay-at-home dad, after quitting his job, but he seemed to struggle with the unfamiliar role of a homemaker. Moreover, his health condition changed from day to day. Additionally, each hemodialysis treatment took about four to five hours, so while Bennett was at the hospital, my mother-in-law actively helped with cooking and taking care of our daughter, which I greatly appreciated. However, Bennett seemed to realize that my mother-in-law would take care of things if he didn't do it himself, so gradually, he started leaving most of the household tasks to either me or my mother-in-law. And so, on days when he was feeling well, he went out more and more, even if it was not a day to go to the hospital. I asked him where he was going, and what he was doing, but at that time, Bennett simply replied, It's for a change of scenery. I can at least do that, can't I? In an irritated tone. Considering Bennett's illness, I couldn't ask him further. Before I could assertively address the issue, he seemed to have gotten a taste of it, and the number of times he went out increased more and more as the days went by. After such a life continued for a while, we finally found a donor for my husband, and he was scheduled for a kidney transplant. Bennett's donor was me. One day, I underwent tests at the hospital. I received a diagnosis that I could donate an organ to my husband, because my kidney function was normal, and I was in good physical and mental health. Please, Noel. With Bennett's desperate plea, I agreed to be his donor, and provide one of my kidneys. After the transplant surgery, my husband went through rehabilitation and gradually regained his health. However, as the donor, I developed proteinuria within a few days after the transplant surgery. Although I had received explanations from the doctors about the risks of donating one of my two kidneys, I never expected to experience any actual complications, and I panicked, not knowing what to do. The doctor told me not to eat too much protein as proteinuria can worsen and lead to heart disease and other problems. Therefore, after discussing with my mother-in-law, I decided to eat different meals from my family with lower protein after my discharge from the hospital. I tried to have low-sodium meals 
and get a good night's sleep. I returned to work with a sense of anxiety, but tried to improve my lifestyle as much as possible like that. Although there were days when I didn't feel well here and there, since the transplant surgery, I have managed to continue working as usual so far. Then, my husband was discharged from the hospital and came home a few days after I was discharged. When we finally had a family dinner together, for the first time after his discharge, he asked, Why are you eating something different from everybody else? You told our daughter not to be picky, but here you are avoiding what you don't like. You're so selfish. Bennett criticized me. He even began insulting me about my post-surgery health and appearance. Admittedly, there were times when I felt tired, had headaches, and couldn't move much. On top of that, my hands, feet, and face were swelling. However, I couldn't understand why Bennett would berate me about these issues, especially when he had experienced similar symptoms in the past. My mother-in-law tried to placate Bennett and explain my illness, but he wouldn't listen. Instead, you might infect me with your illness, so stay away from me. He shouted and insulted me. Our daughter Gemma, who was eating with us, watched her father suddenly start yelling with a fearful look in her eyes. Though she is still young, she sensed the tense atmosphere. Gemma remained silent throughout the meal, continuing to eat with the fork, which she was not yet accustomed to using. But the moment Bennett raised his voice, she stopped looked at her father, and then lowered her head with an expression that looked like she was on the verge of tears. In response, my mother-in-law quietly got up from her seat and hugged her. If I were to retort to Bennett, he would likely just hurl more insults at me. Thinking that this might make our daughter cry, I couldn't say anything. I had no choice but to stay silent, until Gemma finished eating. This was all because, I donated my kidney to Bennett in the first place, and yet, why can he utter such heartless words? After dinner, I tried to leave Gemma with my mother-in-law and talk to Bennett, but he kept saying, Disgusting. Don't come near me, you sick person. Disgusting. What do you think caused this illness, and who do you think I did that for? When I donated my organs to you, knowing the risks such as this, how can you say such things? I retorted. You speak as if I owe you something. It's a normal thing for a wife to support her husband. While I was stunned by how much his personality had changed, Bennett's attitude only worsened. About a month after his discharge, he seemed to have finally returned to his normal life. He started going out often again, and he didn't help with housework or with taking care of our daughter just like before. Even when my mother-in-law suggested that he should spend more time at home, he completely ignored her advice. Bennett is now able to live well, in this way, because I donated a kidney to him, but he seemed to have, completely forgotten about it. Whenever we met, instead of having a conversation as a married couple, he directed insults at me. He didn't even seem to want to live, under the same roof with me. Mom. What's wrong with dad? He's really scary. Gemma would say, frightened of her father every day. Even our daughter, despite her young age, seemed to have questions about her father's attitude, and she stopped going close to him. Bennett, on the other hand, didn't seem to mind about it, and would try to play with Gemma when he was at home. She would cling to me, trembling, every time he did so, and I felt I needed to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do, so I could only comfort my daughter. Looking back, before the transplant, he had desperately begged me to become a donor, but after the surgery, Bennett didn't utter a single word of gratitude. Has Bennett always been this arrogant? When I remembered the happy times when we were newlyweds, and when Gemma was just born, it made me incredibly sad. My relationship with Bennett hadn't gotten any better, but I was trying my best to improve my lifestyle, while I worked. After undergoing several tests at the hospital, it seemed that the proteinuria was gradually improving, and I was relieved that it didn't worsen. One day, it was a weekday, but I had taken a day off from work to go to the hospital, and had just returned home. My mother-in-law went shopping immediately after I came home, and I was considering going to pick up our daughter from daycare myself, and I was taking a moment to relax alone. 
that's when Bennett returned from his usual outings. Upon seeing me, he made a displeased expression, and I wondered if he would once again ignore me. However, what he said was completely unexpected. Divorce me. Bennett said abruptly. Wait. Why are you saying that all of a sudden? I asked. I've, you know, recovered from the illness, and now I'm going to start my life anew. To restart my life, I don't need a wife who's older and sick. Bennett clearly stated to me as he unilaterally brought up the divorce, leaving me bewildered. I was taken aback by his unilateral request for a divorce, but strangely, I wasn't so shocked. My distrust of my husband has already grown, since the time he stopped doing housework and taking care of our daughter, and started going out more often. And his terrible attitude when my illness was discovered, instead of showing concern, he told me not to come near him, and any affection I once had for Bennett had long gone. The hurtful words he had just said to me, only cemented my decision. Fine. I agreed to the divorce, and signed the divorce papers Bennett had prepared. I felt frustrated, but there was no other option. I had no confidence that I could repair our relationship and make it work again, even if we stayed together. Then, get out of this house already. I'm the one inheriting this house, Bennett said with satisfaction, eyeing my name, on the divorce papers. He continued in an arrogant tone, and Gemma is a precious child with my blood, so you leave by yourself. When he mentioned our daughter, I finally reached my breaking point. He has been going out to have fun, without taking care of Gemma. Yet, how could he say that? Don't make all the decisions by yourself. Gemma is scared of you. I would never leave her with someone like you. I shouted. Shut up. Just get out now. Even when I tried to argue with him, he would not listen to me and tried to kick me out of the house. However, when it came to my daughter, I absolutely couldn't give in. It pained me to be a single parent, when I thought of Gemma, who was still so young, but if I were to leave, I was determined to take her with me. As we continued in this standoff, my mother-in-law returned home from shopping. What's going on with you two? I could hear shouting even from outside the house. Behind my puzzled mother-in-law, stood a young woman whom I didn't recognize. Rochelle, who is this? I asked, and my mother-in-law explained. Apparently, when she returned from shopping, she found a young woman outside our front door, holding something. My mother-in-law found it strange and asked her what she was doing there. The woman replied that she knew Bennett and was waiting for him. Feeling sorry for keeping her waiting in such a situation, my mother-in-law invited her inside, saying, If you have business, please come in. She was a nicely dressed woman, who still looked to be in her early or mid-twenties. I had no idea that Bennett had such an acquaintance. When I gave Bennett a suspicious look, he was staring intently at the woman and looked pale. Why did you come inside the house? I told you to wait outside. Bennett stammered. Oh, your mother invited me in, she replied casually. You're getting a divorce, right? Before that, I wanted to get a look at the face of your sick wife. She had the completely opposite attitude of my anxious husband's. While she was chuckling triumphantly, with a confident expression on her face, she looked at me. From the guilty look on my husband's face, as if he had been caught doing something wrong, I sensed that there was some kind of hidden agenda, between them. A certain suspicion, began to form within me. Hey, maybe it's you, who should be leaving this house? I said to Bennett, in a surprisingly calm voice. I can't leave Gemma with someone like you. If you don't want to be sued, take this and leave right now. You can just go to her place. I pushed the divorce papers onto Bennett while yelling. Perhaps the words, I'll sue you if you don't leave. Worked, and he left the house making the sound tisk, after he glared at me hatefully. The young woman was staring at me, while laughing condescendingly, as I was kicking him out of the house. She followed him, out of the house. After they were gone, 
My mother-in-law, who didn't understand the situation, asked me, Noel, what's going on? I told my mother-in-law that I signed the divorce papers, and also about the woman whom my mother-in-law invited in the house. She was Bennett's lover. Looking back at Bennett's actions, it all made sense. He had probably been, seeing her whenever he went out. My mother-in-law, learning about her son's infidelity for the first time, lamented and apologized to me. After Bennett had left the house, he started living with his lover. Gemma seemed lonely, when her father suddenly disappeared, but she didn't cry probably because she was kind of aware of the situation. Perhaps because we were sick, our daughter grew up to be a good listener, who was rarely selfish. It is somewhat sad when a child doesn't require much attention. Considering my own health, I decided to continue living with my daughter and mother-in-law, even after divorcing my husband. Then, one year after the divorce, I decided to quit my job and return to my hometown with my daughter, as my proteinuria has cleared up and life has settled down. When I told my mother-in-law about my plans, she tried to dissuade me. It seemed, she felt responsible for Bennett's actions. She persuaded me, and I agreed to continue living together, with the set time, until I had saved enough money to move out comfortably. My mother-in-law cares so much, about my daughter and me. Yet, why did her son, Bennett, become so selfish? Maybe he has some sort of mental or neurological illness. Although I thought so, I was not willing to put in any more time and effort for a man like him. Just as I had that thought, one day, I came home from work, and I decided to check my phone. I noticed there was one voicemail. The caller was my ex-husband, Bennett. I listened to the message, and he said in a desperate voice, Noel, please help me. I've been diagnosed with a lung disease, and it seems the only solution is surgery to remove it. I need a donor for a lung transplant. Can you be the donor again, and provide one of your lungs for me? I was appalled by how self-centered he could be, and immediately deleted the voicemail. Since we were already divorced and no longer a family, I ignored his audacious requests. Well, even if we were still married, I would never think about donating an organ to him again. Even after that, Bennett continued to call me frequently but I didn't answer any of his calls. Whenever I didn't pick up, he left voicemails. One of them was a condescending message. I broke up with my girlfriend, so I can remarry you. Of course, I ignored that too. A few days later, he picked the time when my mother-in-law wasn't home, and came to the house. It seemed he had grown impatient, since I never answered his calls. You keep ignoring me. I know you'll do whatever I say, if I have Gemma. I'm taking her with me. He threatened, while looking at our trembling daughter in my arms. I held my daughter tightly without flinching, and glared at Bennett. I have legal custody of her. Trying to forcefully take her, is what kidnappers do. You came here out of blue and even threatened us. How selfish can you be? How is just taking my own daughter with me, kidnapping? Just hand Gemma over. If you don't like that, then give me your lung. I called the police as calmly as I could, as I was truly terrified by his bloodshot eyes. Although I couldn't have a proper conversation with them, the police quickly arrived, upon hearing Bennett's furious shouts. Multiple officers arrived, and Bennett was taken away. He had been shouting things like, become a donor. And, give me Gemma. All along. He was taken away while being appeased by the police, and as a result it appeared that a restraining order against me was issued. Around that time, I was planning to leave my in-law's place soon, because I had saved up enough money. However, before that, I was determined to get back at my ex-husband. With the evidence of the affair, which I had obtained from a private investigator, I consulted a lawyer, and demanded alimony from Bennett. I'm pretty sure that he had thought that I wouldn't sue him and relieved, as he had left quietly, on the day of the divorce, but I never said that, I wouldn't demand alimony. I simply gathered evidence, 
to ensure I could get alimony. In the following days, he called me several times, but I didn't pick up the phone, since I knew he was furious. As expected, he left a voicemail, protesting against the alimony claim, and demanding that I become a donor for embryo transplantation. Of course, I ignored these demands, and blocked his number. After that, I rented a place, not too far from my in-law's house, and started living with Gemma. My mother-in-law adores our daughter. And I want to continue, having a relationship with her. Occasionally, my mother-in-law would visit our new place, and one day, she told me about my ex-husband. Bennett couldn't find work, due to the lung disease which was discovered recently. Under these circumstances, he is managing to pay the alimony somehow, and living in fear waiting for his turn for a transplant. The young woman, who had scorned me and laughed at me, apparently left the house, the day after Bennett asked her, to become a donor. However, I had her address confirmed by a private investigator, and she quickly agreed to the alimony claim, when I mentioned the possibility of a lawsuit. So, she's become irrelevant to me. Since the day Bennett came to the house, he hasn't seen Gemma. Regardless of his situation, he's a man who wouldn't pay child support, and tried to forcefully take her away. He has no right to see Gemma. I want to continue my relationship with my mother-in-law, but I have no intention of ever dealing with Bennett again. From now on, I hope we get along, and live in peace while watching my daughter grow together.